Hello friends. Uh, so today I have this short box. And as you can tell, this part here has been rebagged and boarded, but the rest hasn't been touched at all. And it is almost exclusively cool key books or old silver books. Yeah, let's just go right in and start delving into this little uh, box my shop has. All right, so first book in the box is Batman the Killing Joke first print. You can tell by the green text and the yellow cufflink. And you might be like, gee whiz, that's a great book. Toy, there is a second one in the box. None of them are in the best condition, but great books. Next in the box, we have a Star Wars number one. This one has a special type of gram I can feel all over it. You can hear it. But don't worry, next up we have a nicer copy of Star Wars number one. You can see how much whiter this one is than this one. Honestly, this one is a pretty nice copy. Absolutely underrated book. We have Rocket Raccoon number one from the Four Issue Limited series. I really want to read this. Uh, I really should. I should just grab this and the next three, but it just looks so wild every time I flip through it. I'm so interested. Oh, this! This is one of my favorite, favorite comic ads. They do a few different versions. I don't know. When they say different craziness up here. And they're really cute and really funny. I love them. I love old comic ads. Uh, yeah, this looks absolutely mental and I am here for it. Very fun. Very underrated, undervalued book in my opinion, but I'm just biased. I just think it's so cool. I adore Maniac of New York. Uh, it is one of my favorite Aftershock books, honestly. Uh, Animosity is by far and away my favorite. It's one of my favorite indies, but this is a really fun, just like slasher read. And this is a variant by Robert Hack, who is a huge favorite artist of mine. And I think this is stunning. It gives me big horror movie poster vibes and I love horror movies. So this one's probably just going home with me. I adore it. A classic Neil Adams cover, iconic cover. It is a little sun washed. You can tell it's not quite as bright as it could be. Uh, apparently Neil Adams hated this cover because they edited his legs to be farther apart than they actually were when he drew it to fit these words here. So uh, yeah, he hates this because he thinks this leg is so awkwardly long. But still, iconic book, stunning. It's really in your face and I love it. It's just really classic Superman. Ah, oh, yeah, amazing, I love it. Great book. A great book, a great cover. Unfortunately, this one has all kinds of color loss on the spine here. But still, it'll make this copy a little more affordable for people. And honestly, I thought this was gonna be a little bit more expensive, but a fantastic book. And again, I love Addie Granoff. But yeah, very bumpy, but more affordable copy for someone. So that's gonna be great. And to go on theme with Miles Morales, we have this beauty. All things considered, pretty good condition. These often have a line down the front from the poly bag. You can see the faintest indentation, but you really gotta make the light hit it a certain way. It's honestly one of the better copies that have walked through here. But first Miles Morales is always a great thing to find in a box. And then this cover is done by, I believe you pronounce it Takeda? It is uh, the artist for Monstrous. If it's one of her earlier works and uh, the whole Anime hentai thing is probably one of the reasons this is so popular, but this is a very sought after cover. Very saucy and pretty ladies. This cover's got a little bit of tanning going on here, but presents pretty well. This is one of those books that the white on this book I always see just brown, like just real nasty, but this one's not too bad. It would definitely uh, do pretty well with a pressing queen though. Underrated book for me. I absolutely adore this. This is first War Machine. Great cover. Great first appearance. I love this book. <laughs> All right, Marvel feature number one, which is first appearance and origin of the Defenders. I think this is an undervalued book, honestly, and this is a pretty nice copy. These square bound books are, uh, huh, they don't do that well condition wise usually. Ooh, excellent interiors. Ah, oh, what a splash page. Yeah, great book. The whites are very white, the colors are very bright. Still pretty glossy. Gorgeous book. 
I got some Silver Age Batman. It actually presents better than it looks for some reason on camera. I guess the light is just hitting it in an unflattering way, but the colors are absolutely stunning. Again, would do very well from a press. You can see out a little, there you go, yeah. <laughs> but still, Silver Age Batman is never something I'm going to scoff at. Also, this guy. Ah. And then we have first a full appearance of Gambit. This was uh, one of the first key books I got. I remember spending $70 at New York Comic Con to get a really nice copy in 2016. And that was uh, that was like a really big buy for me. Honestly, I, I don't spend a lot on books usually, but great book and great copy. And for my Spawn fans, we got some cool Spawn books here. These are all different covers to issue 100. Do you have doubles of this guy? Look at that gnarly face. We got this guy. I usually see this one. Well, light is doing me no favors. I usually see this one pretty beat up because this black cover is tough. This one's pretty dang nice. And Spawn sells like crazy in this store. And then this one is one of the more popular covers here. Really gnarly. And this is my personal favorite, the Mignola. I think it's just so classic and sharp looking. I love Mignola, especially when he does gargoyles. Look at that face. Ugh, so great. This is a book that is not as hot as it once was, but I will honestly take any Black Panther. Plus people like the, uh, the Campbell cover no matter what, so. Then we have first appearance of, I believe it's Luke's wife, Maya. My Star Wars is a little shaky, but also has these, this stunning cover, uh, which I love about this era of Star Wars, is these very painted, stunning, stunning covers. And then of course this guy, which uh, <laughs> I see pretty often, honestly, probably because of that quarter price tag. A series I have yet to read, but I should really get on. We have one copy of issue two for Avengers in the JLA. And then I'm glad this is the one we got two of. This is a classic, classic cover. George Perez, um, you know, just Superman holding Thor's hammer, Captain Shield. Back of this one feels gross, but it doesn't show up too bad. Yeah, excellent book, great cover. Should actually uh, <laughs> read this book this year. Avengers Arena number one has been a spec pick for me. I grab it at dollar bins pretty often. I do want to read the whole run. Apparently it's pretty good. Also, I love Johnson. Great cover artist. Alpha Flight number one. I want a really clean copy of this. This one's all right, but I want like, I want a sharp copy, you know? Uh, <laughs> this is a series I would also really like to read, honestly. Stumptown number two, not number one. Unfortunate. Oh, a rather hurting copy of First Great Lakes Avengers. This spine is not the prettiest. <laughs> Oof. Not that it's an expensive book to begin with. This is also a book I really want a clean copy of. I once had a very nice copy set aside for myself. I would guess 9.6, maybe a 9.8 if I'm really lucky. Um, and then someone moved it and put a spine tick right in the middle. Um, and I did not buy it because I was very sad. Oh God, this poor guy. A classic Spidey cover. You can see it's got this big crease going right down here, but still, oof. Not really worth pressing and cleaning, but definitely a fun little project. Great book, you know, just classic Spidey. A book that is, uh, I feel like it's more expensive than it should be for the amount of times I see it walk through the shop, but I guess people really like Omega Red. I have no real feelings towards him, honestly. I think maybe I had to be into comics into the 90s to be more into him, but maybe I should actually read this X-Men run. People tell me it's fun and wild and very 90s. And then if you want to see him on the cover, you know, well, more of him on the cover. Great book. I adore this book. Really, really fun to grab. What a great ad on the back. Yeah, stunning book. Uh, this is just really fun. I definitely suggest grabbing it if you ever see it for cheap. 
painfully undervalued book. The movie destroyed the value on this book, but it's still like a great, important X-Men key. Yeah. No Spidey Annual 20. Cap Annual 8. Love this cover. Then we got First Deathlock and First, first George Perez Interiors. Let's see if it has the Marvel Value stamp in here. Yeah, look at that. All right. Ah, this looks so fun. I want to read this so bad. Oh my god. I love these interiors. This is like such creative layouts for back then. Wow, I love this. It's dated, but in a very fun way. I love it. This is a pretty clean copy too. Huh, this might go home with me, honestly. And then Spidey Annual 16. I do see this guy a lot, but it also sells a lot. And we got Watchmen number nine. Fantastic cover. This run just looks so good all together. I believe this is when it's discovered that Ned Leeds is the Hobgoblin. Not the best page quality, but very clean presenting cover. Underrated book in my opinion. Extremely classic X-Men book. For some reason, this is the book that I find Mark Dillers in the most often. I don't know if that happens to be a very strange coincidence, but fun fact. Once again, <laughs> Captain America annually. And to go along with 211, we got 213. Super classic story. This is actually a very nice copy. Has a little bit of a spine roll, but it doesn't break any color or anything. That's an easy press. Ooh, pages are bright, colors, vibrant. Excellent splash page, great book. This is a hot book right now. Ooh, feels a little uh, dusty though. Definitely gonna clean that guy off. But Hulk one. We used to get these in and they just would not sell. They would sit in our bins forever. Nobody cared, but I guess that's how the movies change things. Some good old foil goodness. We got Spider-Man 2099. Like I was saying earlier, these guys often have just really big ticks in them. These like just Marvel full foil covers. This guy has this over here though. So I guess if we're not gonna get spine ticks, we're gonna get a different defect. Ooh, Jusco cards. Looks like Joe Jusco. Star Wars number three. I have not read pretty much any Star Wars comics, but these have some of the most fun interiors I've ever seen, and it entirely interests me. Also, wow, look at this. Oh my goodness, I want one of these cups. Where the Howard the Duck one? These are awesome. Huh. Yeah, these interiors are just, ugh, so good. Swish. So I have this Marvel team up number one, and you know, we usually get stuff in old bags, but this is one of the ones that's actually labeled. Well, that was just fun. We don't get those in very often. It looks much better outside of the yellow bag though. Well, needs a little bit of TLC, but hey, who doesn't? <laughs> Got a Swampy number one. Yeah, this guy's definitely gonna get a little TLC as well. I just got the Omni, not the Omni, I'm sorry. I just got the Absolute for this and I am so excited to finally delve into this. Yeah, this isn't high grade, but definitely a not too shabby of a copy. A personal favorite of mine. I love all these 1968 big premiere issues. This copy is so vibrant. I just, I feel like it just screams Silver Age. Like you got this huge, bold title. You got the hero standing in the middle, striking a dramatic pose. I think the background's so fun. Just a great book. Yeah, 1968 big premieres are my favorite. I'm missing like Iron Man number one, uh, the Captain America one. I think that's it off the top of my head. I could be missing another, but I would love to get that whole set. Gorgeous Ross cover for Captain America 34 from the Brew Baker run. Uh, Mr. Firegate Ryan constantly tells me to read this run, and I have not yet because I'm a slacker, but maybe I should actually get on that. Kick-Ass number one it is, a uh, not exactly the nicest condition. <laughs> a 
believe this is the first print of the first issue though, and I do never see it, but it is not, uh, not exactly valuable. Still, awesome book. Do not see it very often at all. And then we got this cover for Batman Annual 25. When it is extremely underrated. What a great cover. Oh my goodness. Ugh, I love this. Classic storyline that I uh, have not read yet, but something I do plan on delving into extremely soon. But it's a great, great book to run into. Ooh, colors on the inside are so... Wow, they're just popping off the page. I love it. This one's also one of those ones that's usually more beat up with this dark cover, but unfortunately, the cover is really... Let's see. You can see here, the cover goes way over the pages, like significantly, but it's great book. And then we got Batman 619 and Batman 619. Both great covers. I, uh, was always a fan of this one because I'm a big Poison Ivy fan. Oh, just look at how gnarly everybody looks. Fantastic cover. And then of course, everybody loves the Jim Lee cover. It is a wraparound, which I can't uh, take out too hard right now, but. Let's show you this one while I'm at it, huh? All right, we're going back to multiple copies for this one, but this is Revival number one with a fantastic Jenny Frizen cover. This run has a whole lot of gorgeous Jenny Frizen covers. I highly, highly suggest checking it out. Book is pretty good. Uh, you know, it's a zombie book. I like zombies. This one is signed. I did not see a COA anywhere, but double signed. This is another cover. Yeah, book is uh, definitely fun. The covers are stunning. My favorite one is definitely like, there's one where a skeleton is dancing with someone at like a, a party or something. Yeah, I believe every issue for cover A had a Jenny Frizen cover. And then... This is the second printing, which I actually might grab. I kind of love this and I definitely have cover A. But you can kind of find most of this one at dollar bins and they have stunning Frozen covers. Uh, I'm not taking this one out of the bag and board yet because this is a convention exclusive that's double signed from Third Eye Comics and it has a COA. 16 of 20, wow. Uh, so I'll transfer that over when I can take the seal over. Yeah. It's definitely worth a read if you like zombies. It's very much like a, if you don't like zombies, skip on it if you do read it. It's nothing that transcends the genre, but I had a good time reading it. So, um, I think it's like eight trade paperbacks or four hardcovers. Might be tentary big books, I forget, I'm sorry. We are nearing the end, but I'm gonna end with two bangers of keys if I do say so myself. I've definitely grabbed this one quite a few times just because of this cover. I love her. And uh, I really wanna read this run. I really like X-Men stuff, you can't tell. Great harrowing cover of The Invisible Woman. Super beat book though. And again, I'm biased, but this is a fantastic cover. I love it. She's just always doing this pose in the middle of everything, and I am here for it. Like a phoenix. Great. And then last two books I'm pulling up right now. Oh, I'm sorry, I have three books left. <laughs> okay. I accidentally pulled out the last three books instead of the last two books, so I'm very excited to show you which book got mixed in with the other two big keys. Alright, so first of the last three is Avengers 57, First Vision. This cover is really tough to get in high grade because it's all black and... But it is one of my favorite covers of all time. I just, the second I saw it, I was blown away and it was the first time I think an older book had done that for me. This one might be nicer than mine, I'm not sure. It's one of those that'll definitely do really well with a press and clean. Unfortunately, there is uh, some absence in the color in the red. That's part of what makes this book so hard to get nice copies of. There he is. It's just the vibrant red and the dark black. Tough book, but man, do I love this book. Ugh, oh, so cool. I also saw this beautiful print of like, even an Android can cry thing. Um, I, I keep thinking about it. I might try to get it online. 
Ugh. Stunning book. This is one of my favorite keys, honestly. It's just so good. But anyway, yeah. Much better than this guy usually is when he walks into the store. And this is the book I accidentally pulled out with the other two keys. Dark Hawk number one. Just as important as Avengers 57, of course. I do actually really want like a 9-8 Dark Hawk. Yeah, pretty use printer. Oh, <laughs> that is awesome. It's kind of printed pretty poor though. Some of the, the letters are a little blurry, but excellent splash page. This is awesome. I want to read this whole run. It seems just bonkers in a great way. Last but certainly not least, we have a first appearance of Poison Ivy, and it is quite the stunning copy. The colors are so vibrant. It has not been cleaned or pressed yet, you can see. Ah, it is so nice though. The colors are vibrant, the whites are white. This is one of the main defects down here. And then the back. Uh, could definitely use a little bit of a cleaning here. Oh heck, yeah, we got the centerfold. Come back. There we go. This guy is ripped out all the time in this book because who wouldn't want Batman and Robin on their wall as a kid? But staples firmly attached through them. Love that. Let's go to that amazing first splash page. Her Smooch and Batman. It is stunning. Look at those colors. Ugh. I'm obsessed with this book and I'm trying to convince myself not to buy it because I don't need another, but maybe I'll trade in a low grade copy for it. Ugh. Only one of my favorite books of all time, ever. <laughs> so please let me know what your favorite book in this stack was. I think it's pretty obvious which one mine was. Uh, I am a sucker for that book and it's so pretty, but yeah, let me know if you could have any book in this box, what would you get? And I do have a few more cool boxes that we got in that I'm gonna be posting. I might actually be doing more than one video a week, so that's really exciting. Uh, there's definitely a lot of really cool stuff. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day and you find very pretty books. Bye. We're a little behind the scenes, my tripod was uh, just falling. It was just not working at all. And my hands were way too shaky to do that. So I have a long box balanced on top of a lid. Uh, and then I have my stand taped to the box to keep it where I need it to be. And I have the tape on it for weight because otherwise all this will fall. Uh, yeah, so if the ankle was a little poor, sorry, that'll be better next time. <laughs>